Hey guys, what's going on? Jacob B here. So this is weird because I said I couldn't cover the Illinois primaries live. I couldn't show the NYT thing, so I'm just going to do some MLB The Show gameplay in the background. But I will be discussing li all live results. Right now they're saying they're not expecting anything for another 45 minutes, so I'm probably just going to commentate a game real quick. Conquest. I'm almost finished with it as you can see, but not quite. Got the Mets on rookie. I'll be reporting for first results live as soon as they come in, but right now I'm just going to do a quick game. Flushing, New York. Welcome to beautiful My mic working? I'm pretty sure it is. from New York State is the starter on the mound. What do we need to know here, HR? Well, Matt, he's got five pitches, and I mean, they're all good. He throws them for strikes, he dominates, he mixes speed. I asked him one day, what's your best pitch? And he told me, all five. And this is bounced foul at the plate, and that moves the count to 0-2 now. Two strike bunt attempt here as this one's down. Throw to first will get him as they pounce on it quickly to snuff out the bunt attempt. Let's see if I can get on base here early. Yes, he'll get his first opportunity in this one. Not that great at the game, I just have a decent team. Oh, there we go. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm not sure about that. Close. Close. Really close. Hit hard to short. Field it cleanly. Son of a bit. Time and the side is retired. So a fairly painless top of the first. And now the Mets offense will go to work for the first time. No score. So striding forward now. Number one. It lead things off here in the bottom half of the first. First pitch fastball. There and it's ball one. There we go. Swing and a miss, one and one. Oh, he's got that one. beautiful 12 to 6 curveball, doesn't he? It's part of what makes him as good got as him. he is, and, and he has a lot of confidence in it. Got him. Now He'll let's, even throw up now let's, count now times. let's finish him. We got him down. Now let's finish him. Good job oh. to spoil that one away, and he stays alive. He'll try again, one, two. And he'll try to get him fishing oh, hey, there, but he won't offer in the dirt, hey. and it's back to even at two and two. Hey, we got a we got a second buddy in comment. swung on and grounded out. Come on, join the comment club. Throw to first is in time for the if first you guys down. Are waiting for Illinois coverage, right now it's too early to call. The polls haven't even closed yet, so I'm not I'm not gonna comment it on anything until the polls close. One out. And the first results words expect. NYT saying we're gonna have to wait another 30 minutes after polls close. So it'll be a little bit. Right it'll be a little it's while, but it's okay. If you can hit the corner with it, but no dice this time. And then that's a pretty good example of why he's such a great pitcher. Yeah, stuff. Stuff is obviously the important key to being dominant on the mound. Hey Clay, try to get some. Clay, try to get some more people in the stream. But he does, and he really spotted that pitch. Got him swinging on the fastball there. Jose Reyes becomes the second out of the bottom of the first. Michael Conforto is at the plate as he looks at ball one. And he gets the call that time for strike number one. 
Looking at strike two, a fastball that catches the inside corner. That's a good fastball down the zone. There we go. Some come on, come on. Get this play. Get this play. There we go. on to first gets him, and the side is retired. Mets. Now let's see what Turner does. We need to do a bunch of stuff with him. Thanks, Clay, for getting another person in the stream. Maybe we could get a record of like 25 people in here tonight. See him work both sides of the plate with his curveball. Maybe not that far in. Damn it! Go down the wall. Come on, go, go, go. Super slow catcher. Can't get anything going. Didi. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Swing and a miss, and he's behind 0-1. Now that is power. You want to challenge me? I'm going to give him a big swing. That was the big come swing on, right there. On. I loved it. Swing Let's go. Let's go. That's gonna be Let's go. Let's go. I'm he thinking three. I'm thinking three. For second. No, I'm thinking two. And he is in the second with two. a two-out double. Man, I don't think he could have bisected those fielders Not any seven. better if he Come tried. Come on, That was into the alley for a gapper that'll Go bring ahead. him easily into second base. Here's the first pitch to him. Goes down to get the sinker, and it's chopped foul at the plate. It's strike one. Oh, let's go, baby. Let's go. There we go. That's the start we needed. That's the start we needed. We got the lead now. Come on. Turn me up. Turn me up a dick slap, pitcher. Let's go. That's a dick slap. Dick slap city. The eight hitter gets a base hit. You know how important that is? Now the pitcher has to hit in this inning, and he doesn't lead off next inning, clogging the bases or starting the inning. I think I'll go with Anthony Rendon as a pinch hitter. Oh, damn it. Okay. I guess I'll go with Darren O'Day. The weird looking pitcher. There we go. There we go. All we need to do is hit a for what I need to do, I need to get that 89-10 Lensicum for the 99 Lensicum collection. I need I need to get a lot of San Francisco Giants players. Yeah, I need a lot of things. I need one more home run with shortstop, so that's I'm kind of close on that. Oh. I need legend hitters and pitchers. I need a couple complete game shutouts with with legend pitchers. So. I'm kind of close on a lot of 99s and 26% in the whole dynasty program. So if I do one more thing, I'm, I'm going to get 99 Vita Blue and, and get really close to 99 Cal Ripken. It's a swinging bunt up the line. That winds up foul. Two and two count. Here it comes. Now there we go. Got him. Up on him. Strike three called and a Got great him. pitch there to retire the side. That's so nothing happening this now. time around. Sweet Lou. Brock. Oh, uh, no. Not good. Uh, this is foul for the first 
something. Hey, Clay, should I squeeze one? Comment yes or no. Comment yes or no. Should I squeeze a bunt? Into the windup. Here comes the 0 and 1. Now a bunt oh, here. no, that's not a good squeeze. It's it. not a good squeeze. In time, and the leadoff man is gone to start the third. Center fielder number three, Michael Taylor. Digging in for his second at bat, Michael Taylor. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. First pitch of the at bat on its way. And he'll try to check his swing here, but he'll have no luck. It's strike one. Pitch on the way. Oh, oh yay, yeah, let's go. Get out of here, baseball. Let's go. And I can now say we're five minutes from pole closing. So you may hear something in about five minutes. I need a date. Need so a date. And this is drifting foul back into the stands. The wind up and the 0 1. Let's go. Let's go. There's a hit. There's a hit. And Reyes can't flag it down. Turner, I just can't hit dingers with him. I need to hit four to get that 95 George Springer. Be a great center fielder on the team. I mean, I'll get all the hits done and all the runs done. I'm worried about the dingers. Speaking of that, get somebody to close out this game. Not a. I think I'll go with Tyler Clippert actually. Nothing in one count. Here it comes. Ah. After that swing, you just got to reset yourself. You still have a strike. Hi, JJ and Grace Holmes. About how silly you just looked on that last pitch. And a half-hearted so. swing there as they tie him up inside for the third strike, and the inning is. Hey Ben, this is MLB The Show, 17. Huh. Let's see if we can shut him down. Turn down the setting. Got him. Well, there we go. We got the W. Three nothing. The final score in this one today. Stephen Matt. Three innings in the losing effort. Hey JJ and Grace, I'm I'm about to do some election reporting in about four minutes. The the polls are closing in Illinois in about four minutes. I'm some calls may not be in for a while since. The governor's races are really close, and also the attorney general on the Democrat side is really close. And the attorney general is going to be a Democrat, so not going to do much much discussion on the Republicans. I can do a prediction right now and say that Pritzker is going to be the nominee, but it, it's going to be late before we call it, before I officially call it. And on the Republican side, I think Rauner's going to survive. He's not a very good governor, but Gene Ives, that, that ad went too far. Jesus. 
So what I'm doing right now is if you're not familiar with MLB is I'm attacking to the I'm attacking to get to Toronto. Hey, JJ, election night's tonight in about I'll you'll get your first report in 2 minutes. The polls close at 7 o'clock. Polls close. Uh, okay, I got that, JJ. about to close in about one minute so I'll do my first characterization to the race and my first semi -proje projection Hey JJ, I'm not doing like election nights like that. This is because this is live. The primaries are tonight. The primaries, like the polls are literally closing and literally right on the clock according to New York Times. It's, they close at 8 Eastern at 7.59 on their clock. So I'll be doing some background gameplay but I'll be, I'll be updating you and putting my own rhetoric in it, but I gotta do a, I gotta get another game in. No, oh, hey, I got a legend pitcher. Now if I could get a complete game. No. No mom, no calls. Sorry about that. Okay, JJL. I'm working I'm actually working on Donald Trump versus Elizabeth Warren right now. It just take a while. Afternoon baseball on the show as you get a look there at Rogers Center. But I'll do Elizabeth Warren first, then Bernie. Thank you for your feedback, though. And I can now officially report that the polls are clo are closed and all and all races are too close to call. But especially the governor's race on both sides and the attorney general's race, where Pat Quinn and Kwame Raoul are really close. I can report those are too close to call and won't be hours or perhaps. My thoughts about Oprah. Like, Ben, what do you mean? Like, her running for president? I think she would get her ass kicked if she ran for president. Trump has more money. Trump has more charisma. Trump has is the incumbent. But the runner is back easily. I don't think she could get the African American vote. I don't think I think Oprah could get decent black Standing vote, but I don't think Michael she could Taylor. get oh, I don't think she could do as well as Barack Obama at all. I think she'd lose here. to Donald Trump. Yes. She may the only state she may have a chance of flipping is Michigan. That's that's more of Trump's own doing though. Because he has a thirty two percent approval rating in Michigan. And he only won it by like 12,000 votes. Pierce so, is there yeah. one away. And now we'll look at the starting lineup for the visitors in this one. What do they need to do to get a win on the road here today, Harold? Matt, this club just got to get on the board early. When they get out and score yeah. early and put the pressure on the other team, they have a great chance of winning games. I think that's the key to this one here. Oh, I be taken in by the third base cannot hit with out. Turner. Stepping in, Gary Sanchez. 
will get to take his first cuts here. Here comes the first pitch. We are waiting for the first vote to come in. The polls have closed, so we could you could expect any second. It could, but it could take up to 30 minutes realistically, because these precincts have to have to lock the doors. There's also state laws in Illinois. I used to live there, so I know that if you're in line by the time the polls close, you get to vote. So there could still be people in line in Chicago. They have over 3,000 precincts. So yeah. Takes a look at one catching the outside corner. Set to deliver on two and one. Left side. Gregorius showing off the range. Throw on to first in time, one away. So striding forward now, Kevin Pilar, as he'll get his first opportunity in this one. Who is W? And this is fouled straight back. What? The wind up and the 0-1. Now he gets on. Who are you talking about, JJ? Foul right at home play. Can you retype that? That typo or something? And the slider gets him swinging, two gone. So stepping in, Josh Donaldson. First cuts for him here with the bases open and two away. First pitch hack in here, and that's the first strike. Oh, and he's really getting the better of him now. It's strike two. He's not messing around this inning. He's attacking. No vote is still coming, unfortunately. It's a fact that it's live, it could be 10 minutes, it could be 2 hours, so I'm just going to stand by, comment, and tell you everything I know. Ooh, yay, there we go, got that shortstop home run. There's the dinger. Who is Warren VP? If you put a fastball oh, up the zone, over the plate, this guy's gonna turn it around in a That would be a hard this one. I'm no not shocker. I didn't put Send VPs on it. For strike one. I only put Mike Pence on there. I didn't the wind up and the figure out a, a VP because well, she hasn't really way, said anything about it. So you hate when you're saying second. stuff, you hate to be wrong in reporting, so. The corner and tries so Warren and, I'll just put, and say Warren and Generic Democrat is a VP, a and that's what would happen. I, no, Bernie would be 78 in 2020. I don't think he'd want to take on the job as VP. President, maybe. Two down. Uh, Ninth, the pitcher number 36. Gaylord now to the plate, Perry. Gaylord Perry. A VP, I think, would be something young. Somebody under, like, 60 would be a good VP. And this is Maybe Cory Booker or Kamala Harris. They're both African-American, and Kamala Harris is He's a woman. The so they got, they got, they got the some there cards they could play there. The Two out, nobody on. I don't know if you want to stack the ticket with women, though, though. Because Trump may do better in the men's vote. On the ground is so I'm, I'm thinking it would be Cory Booker. Sherrod Brown. Sherrod Brown's no a great guy and all, but that has not been the strategy of the Democratic Party. He's the same old white man, and I think he has his eyes on the White House and. His Trump score, well, he's definitely progressive. His Trump score is a, a lot higher than Elizabeth Warren, and he's, I think he's too conservative. I'm thinking, I mean, Brown's not conservative, but I think he's too conservative for Elizabeth Warren. Good job to spoil that one away, and he stays alive. One who has, oh, like, I think Cory Booker straight, makes sense, African-American. He is, zone, he's a male. He, he has, his right Trump score is, is like 12%, and Warren's is 9%, so it's similar. 
So I'm I'm thinking Cory Booker makes the most sense. Plus he's only 48. Is in with one away now as he swings and misses here at strike one. This lineup is flailing right now. They're having a hard time just making contact, let alone putting the ball in play. So that's that's why I'm not thinking Sharon Brown. Swing and he pops him up over toward foul territory. But this will land untouched. The next 0 2. Bob Casey. Now a what do you want me to make an election night with him? Is after it. With him. He makes the running play. Two down. Give you my honest opinion. Would Bob Casey win? He's really popular in Pennsylvania. Trump had 306. Pennsylvania's 20. That gets him to, to Trump down to 286. Here's the 01 pitch. I don't really know much about Bob Casey. I just know he's a popular senator from Pennsylvania. Could he also win Ohio, Michigan, and Wisconsin? Give him over 300. Maybe just win Michigan. He'd have to win Michigan in that congressional district in Maine, and then the Democrats would have to have the House. Casey's really popular, so... And he's, he's liberal, but he's not that liberal. Oh, Elizabeth Warren versus Bob Casey. Or, Elizabeth Warren and Bob, and Bob Casey is the VP. Again, I mean, Casey does have the swing state factor, but also so does Sherrod Brown. And... It becomes really hard because... The president loves Pennsylvania. He went to school in Pennsylvania, so that may become a waste of a of a swing state. I'd honestly probably rather go with Sherrod Brown than Bob Casey, but Kerry Booker probably the best. Corey Brook Booker's the best candidate. Digging in to try it again. Lou Brock. He'll stand in to open things up here in the third. Travis fields it cleanly. Throw to first in time, and the leadoff man is gone to start the third. One that actually aligns on policy. I know there's no way in hell she could be a, a good VP candidate. Maybe as a president. I already did a prediction on her as president. But Kirsten Gillibrand, they're within one point of each other on Trump scores. So they're basically have the same policy alignment. Gillibrand is 51, so she doesn't have an age problem. She'd be 54 in 2020. So, Gillibrand is the most aligned, but the second most aligned in the Senate is Cory Booker. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Pilar is there, so, and it's a very quick yeah. inning as the side is retired. So they go quietly here in this half inning. By the way, it's still too early to call in all of Illinois' races. This one, three to nothing. Here's Steve Pierce now. Seven, eight, and nine to start the home third. Not much going on offensively so far for these guys. And one race that I'm going to talk about, it's, you may have heard about it, JJ, but Illinois' third congressional district. The, Incumbent is named Dan Lepensky. He's being primary challenged by a woman named Marie N Newman. And Into the wind up, she is the she's out fundraising him, so I think she has a slight advantage to beat Lepensky. But also, what makes it a nationalized race is that the Republican running unopposed is Arthur Jones. Arthur Jones is an idiot. He denies the Holocaust. He will not win, but it's just the fact that he's running has got national attention. So, Russell Martin now. I'm not even sure. Even though he's running unopposed, I'm not even sure. Like the Illinois Republicans won't try to stage somebody to ride in. They could try to ride in because if they all, I know there'd be a bunch of ride-ins in this primary in front of that but he's looking really great on I don't know if they right could now. all unify I mean, by one to take down the the only one on the ballot right 
couldn't wait back a swing and a miss. Oh. That one is the only one with unopposed so on with somebody running unopposed that I'm not gonna call. Try again. Just one because two. Arthur Jones is so controversial. And that is swung on and missed, and things He's are starting to look so bleak here for the home nine. nine. There are two away. Warn Casey Trump Pence. I will continue to work on it and expect it in the coming days. Who do you think will win the Illinois primaries tonight? I've already laid out my prediction. Who do you think will win? Now we got a 0-2 count, Matt. I tell you what, so impressive. He is executing his game plan. Do you think it'll be Pritzker? He's already spent 70 million dollars of his own money. Or Kennedy, who's doing well because of his last man. On a two-strike count with two away in the inning. And now shut. Pull up 270 to win. This is on PlayStation, so literally the damn thing will be and a miss. He struck him out, and that'll do it here as the ball game is over. Three to one. I will broadcast this afternoon. And give you live Marcus Stroman results. worked only three innings in the losing are, effort. So that's it for us this now. afternoon. For Harold for Reynolds, Dan minutes. Plezak, and our entire crew, I'm Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching MLB okay. The Show. JJ, I'll try, but don't be surprised if the if the stream ends. Not not on my part, but on me pulling it up. It's saying I could only broadcast mic audio. It's not showing everything else. So, yeah. But I'm just going to report it. I can report it to you what happened. Is is that okay? There's... Tomorrow, e possibly. It's possible. I didn't know I was conquering the pirates. Okay, that's cool. Okay, I get the... Okay, let's see what I get. You get nothing for this. Okay. Get a few tickets. It's a max fee. So if I just... I just gotta use breakout series players, which I have very few of, and... I could get a couple of decent cards. Rendon I wouldn't use. But Catfish Hunter could possibly get in the rotation. Go live at 2 p.m. JJ, at 2 p.m. I'm in school. And I can't very well go live in school because my phone has a no... My school has a no phone policy. and you can't bring your PlayStation to school. Five is a better chance. Yeah, 
I can go live at 5 p.m. Yes, that'll work. I can make that work. I can make that work. There we go. Oh hey, hey, that's a lot of tickets, boy. That's a lot of tickets. Actually, give me something I can kind of use. Tickets. Now I could get any player I want. I can get any two players I want. I'm gonna check to see if I have these legend hitters and pitchers. Real, real quick. There are no votes in, but I can say that the early leaders, it's not, it's not shocking, and the top three, uh, not in any specific order, will be J.B. Pritzker, Chris Kennedy, and Daniel Biss. That's what I can say. I can report the top half of the field. That's all I'm going to say at this hour. No vote has come in, but I've read a few exit polls. One exit poll that's also interesting is how I think Kennedy is a chance. He's down by six in a couple polls, but that's... but the African American vote that is a very key vote of the Democratic Party. It's one of the biggest votes out there, and. And that is tied between Kennedy and Pritzker, so that makes me think Pritzker will narrowly win it late tonight. Because this will get the progressive side of the party, Pritzker will get all of the moderates, and Kennedy will get the mainstreams. And I think there's enough moderates to, for Pritzker to bring this home tonight. Since in Illinois there is no runoff law, I believe. Yeah, there's no runoff law, so it's just whoever it's whoever gets the most votes tonight. And guess what? Are you excited, JJ? We got vote. We got vote. J.B. Pritzker is the early leader. He has 41% of the vote. Chris Kennedy's in second, has 30% of the vote. Daniel Bisser's in third, has 26.5. And the other three candidates have less than one. Pritzker's the early leader. We also got vote out of the Republican. It's just one precinct, but still. This seems to be a very tight race. Bruce Rauner, he's up 50. He has 52.7% of the vote. Gene Ives, 47.3. So we have nothing to say. We just have reports that our first vote. Rauner and Pritzker are the early leaders. No way projection. Yes, Ben, it'll be available. JJ, I don't understand what I don't understand the question. Sorry. But it looks like that the primary turnout is slightly higher on the Democratic side. But it, it's not its not a 17% difference like the polls have been suggesting. Thank you, Ben, for tuning in. Thank you, Ben, for tuning in.
AJ, I assume you're asking who would be Hillary Clinton's VP in 2020, or something like that. I'm not sure. Hillary, I don't think she's gonna run. The Democrats, no way in hell they'll renominate her. But if she did have a a V, if she's somehow in hell got the nomination, it could be anything from Bernard. It could be anything from Sanders to anything. I think we got more vote in. Hold on. The Republicans, we have one precinct. The Democrats, J.B. Pritzker is holding a steady lead. There's 68 precincts reported, 1% in. We are not calling it, though. Pritzker has 40.3% of the vote. Kennedy has 30% of the vote. Biss has 27.4% of the vote. And those are the only... And the other three are under 1%. Nothing is in on the Republican side except that one number that I reported earlier. These votes are going to come in rapidly. But I'm not calling anything based on two counties. So, I mean, Chicago hasn't come in. So that's why I'm not calling the Democratic primary. Because... Chris Kennedy, it's only four, it's 10 points, but it's only 1,400 votes. Chicago will have probably 500,000 votes. So if Chicago comes in heavily for Kennedy, and Southern Illinois comes in for Biss and Pritzker, we could have a hell of a night on our hands. And I also got, in those 68 pre precincts also repo reported on the Republican side, I'm definitely not calling this. Bruce Rauner's at 53%. Gene Ives is at 47. Less than 600 votes separating the two candidates in outer Chicago suburbs. PlayStation, the mic is working, the PlayStation's not great. Because it won't let me broadcast straight from the NYT website, so having to do it a little bit creatively. Clinton, Cory Booker. <gasps> Maybe. Again, Cory Booker is a very attractive vice presidential candidate. But I think him being in the national spotlight right now, his ego's really, really high. So, he could be thinking, I want to be president, vice president, I'm too good to be vice president. But if he's willing to be on a vice presidential ticket, I think he'd be a very good pick for any Democrat. No votes have come in. Ooh. Ooh, we have a major report. 
a major report. The Democratic Attorney General's race, Kwame Raoul, is up by 0.6 points, less than 100 votes, over former Governor Pat Quinn. And Nancy Rotherig is running a strong, and Sharon Fairley are running decent third and fourth. Both of them are over 15%. There are a lot of candidates here. And each one, and on the Republican side, it's too early to call, but we can report that Erica Harold has a lead for Attorney General. This is to replace the retiring Lisa Madigan. And we have some official projections. None of these are surprises. In the first, in Illinois' first House district, Bobby Rush is the incumbent. He was uncontested. And Jimmy Lee Tillman was also uncontested in the Republican primary. Ooh. My prediction did not come into fruition. Arthur Jones has won the Republican primary. Arthur Jones, a neo-Nazi, is now the Republican nominee for Illinois' 3rd House District. Let's see what he let's see what he tries to say. Arthur Jones has won. And who would help Hillary Clinton? Her name is pretty damaging. I don't know if Hillary Clinton can be helped. Bill her Bill Clinton's pretty popular. He's a former president. Maybe Bill Clinton could help and some other people can help. Maybe it could be Clinton, Clinton, and Clinton. Hillary Clinton for president, Chelsea Clinton as vice president, and Bill Clinton would be the first dude, first husband, whatever, whatever, but... Bernie, uh, I'm not sure he'd take it, but he'd he'd give Hillary a fighting chance. But I still think the president of the United States would win if Bernie. Even I think Bernie would beat Trump outright, but I still think the president would win if Bernie was just a VP. Ooh, we have new reporting. But major, major news. J.B. Pritzker still has the lead. He's at 37.4%. State Senator Daniel Biss has now moved into second. He's at 33.6%. Chris Kennedy's in third at 26.5%. And candidate, the fourth candidate, has finally moved above 1%. His name is T.O. Hardiman. He is 1.4%. And a big one, on the Republican side, Bruce Rauner has 55.3%. Jeannie Ives has 44.7%. Okay, now that we got the reporting out of the way, would Hillary flip a state? After that book and everything that's become, she's very unpopular. Hillary Clinton was the only candidate the only Democrat that clues Michigan. And I don't think they'd give her another chance. I think they know how how crappy of a candidate Hillary Clinton is. I think they know how bad Hillary is. And I think Hillary is toast. Mm. 
no, Hillary probably would not flip a state. And we also have some more <laughs> reporting of semi-decent newsworthy, I guess. Kwame Raoul is still holding a lead against the former governor, Pat Quinn, 23%. Pat Quinn's at 22.2%. And Nancy Rothering is still running at 18%. So I'm not even saying... If Bernie was her VP, I think she could flip Michigan and maybe Wisconsin. Um, probably not Pennsylvania. If Bernie was the VP, may probably flip Michigan. Maybe Wisconsin, definitely not Pennsylvania. That's my analysis. And I have a projection. I have my first projection. It's not much news, but Eric Harold will be the Republican nominee for Attorney General of the state of Illinois. There we go, the projection has been made. We're still waiting on many house races, but the biggest one, Illinois U.S. House District 12. No vote is in. Two Democrats and two Republicans. Mike Bost is, is the incumbent. His race is rated as a toss-up, but I still personally think it's more lean Republican. He won by re-election by 15 points in 2016. Uh, 2014, if Sherrod Brown was her VP, I think she'd make Ohio from 9 points to 3 points, but Michigan, probably, since there's only 12,000 votes, flip. But that's but that's it. Well, not, not Wisconsin or Pennsylvania clear skies or over Dodger Stadium in Florida. LA. We expect a good battle out of this conquest matchup between the All Stars right. and Keep the Dodgers. Keep things going. I may do. You may name me a VP that can get her to win. Coming up next. Oh, and one. Here it comes. Swing and he popped him up over in foul territory. Back in third. Ooh. And there's your first out of the inning. So Keep naming me some VPs, JJ. As he'll get his first opportunity in this one. Swing and a miss on a ball out of the zone. Our temperature at first pitch and even 70 degrees here this afternoon. There's a swing and a missile sent out to center field. Peterson ah. This game, I gotta pay to try really hard, focus pretty hard, but they still will answer a few questions so if you just ask them to me. I had him guessing that time as he's barely able to follow it away. Bases are empty here with two men out. I will probably do a report after every half inning. If there are any new votes, I'll check after every half inning. West, Kanye West. What was? I assume you're talking about Kanye West. Yeah, no, she'd be lucky to hold, she'd be lucky to hold Washington, Oregon, she'd be lucky to hold all the seats, she'd probably lose Minnesota, probably lose Colorado, probably lose Nevada, if Kanye West was her VP, but I think with her name being Hillary, she'd win all the solid blues. I have some more results in from Illinois Governor, by the way. J.B. Pritzker with 1% of the vote, 142 precincts in, has 38.7% of the vote. Daniel Biss, 33, and Chris Kennedy, who is uh, John F. Kennedy, I guess, the late president, John F. Kennedy's nephews at 25%. 0.7%. And Bruce Rauner with 1% in is at 55.4. And Gene Ives is at 44.6. No projections, though, on any of those races. And in the Attorney General's race with 2% in, Kwame Raul is at 23.2%. Pat Quinn at 22.3%. So within one point. Nancy Rothering 
is at 17.8%, and I'm not going to go any further. I'm not going to go any further because those are the only two three that have a chance of winning. I've already projected Erica Harold will be the Republican nominee. If Bob Casey was a was a Democrat nominee, I think sh she could flip Pennsylvania and Michigan, but that would still get her that would still get her two electoral votes short the president no would Trevor Bauer would win 270 to 268, but then we'd have intense litigation and you don't want a 270, 268 election. But I don't think she. I almost think it would take Kim Baldwin to flip Wisconsin. And she's not popular in her home state, so I don't think she can do it. Fastball at 94 miles an hour, and it's one and one. Taken cold strike two on the inside part of the plate, one and two now. That's what makes this guy so great. A pitch right on the corner. Most people cannot do that. Seems like he does it any time he sits back there and says, here's where I want to put it, and he puts it there. And another foul ball. Another 1-2 delivery. Now the fastball is right by him as he swings and misses for the first out of the inning. And now is Yassiel. First pitch coming, here it is. Yassiel, Wee. And that finds some outfield grass. It's a base hit. Well, the leadoff guy couldn't get on, but the number two guy with that base hit gets on base. Now here comes the thunder. The meat of the order. I can report it's going to be want. a very late night. Vote keeps coming in. It's here's Corey the Seager. Same. Let's see if anybody can overtake Pritzker. Cold Pritzker. Strike on the black. It's 0-1. Man at first or if for it could be really close, and I'm going to be up till 2 o'clock in the morning, and... All this shit's gonna be too much. chopped weakly to the left. Get the out, get the out. And he Got wouldn't it. even think Got about it. second as he'll flip on to first for the sure out. There's only one percent in and races this expensive that I, I could get to the if I made a false call. And he could give his guys an early lead if he can come through here. Because Chicago still has not come in, and I don't have very many voters, but Bauer all of closes. these people, all these politicians, are always trying to find a way the other half. themselves to play by the law. So if Three. I were to go out on limb and say, at the knees. No Rauner and, and two Pritzker strikes. were the nominees, he certainly hasn't and been the aggressor in this at bat. Two straight takes. I, so I would we'll never say Kwame Rowell was the, the nominee because he's not. In the dirt, strike three, but no yet, chance to least. recover. Turner is on at first after the strikeout. I got a viewer. First, first pitch of the at bat. JJ, I guess it's finally red strike. Oh, bye, JJ. Strike. Well, bye. Matt, as advertised, he's broke out with a good fastball. He likes to pitch off the fastball, but this was in the mid 90s. Oh. We'll see him be aggressive oh, most of this game with that fastball. And he's going to make it up to third here oh, as he advances. Oh, okay. Pitch. Swing and a miss, and he's behind. One and two. You know, this isn't a ballpark that yields a lot of runs. So when you've got a chance like this, to put some we got some major the report. Board, it becomes really a little bit of the votes in. Breaking ball, and he gets him to chase it in the dirt. Sanchez. A little bit. Three percent in. Gets him out of the jam. J. B. Pritzker has 43.7 percent of the vote. No. Change that I was talking. 45.2 percent of the vote. Biss has 26.3. Kennedy is 25.2. Bruce Brown is holding a steady 54%. Ives is at 50. Or 45.8%. And I don't know, but. This is going to be long because I. But a foul ball here, 0 and 1. I'd be cooked. Usually the the base of Illinois politics, but this is the Republican and primary, and there aren't a lot of Republicans in Cook County, so 
which is Chicago. If you don't know. It also, Kwame Raul has widened his lead against Pat Quinn, the former governor. Kwame Raul has a 4.3% lead, 29.9%. And Pat Quinn is 25.6%. And Nancy Rothering has fallen back to 11.8%. Erica Harold, I'm maintaining my projection. She's at 62% with 3% in. I'm calling that. She's winning Chicago. She's winning everything. Gary so striding in. Gary Sanchez. He'll get to take his first cuts here. Well, I had him chopping at that one. It's nothing in one. Oh, and he's Hopefully really getting the better of him now. It's hundred dollar newspaper. Every time you go out there to start a game on the mound, you hope to settle in quickly and get into a groove. And he's definitely done that so far in the early going. Looks like he could go pretty deep into this. One. And indeed, the throw will finish him off as they get the put out at first, and there are two away now. Didi Gregorius, first two men in the inning have both gone down via the punch out, so we'll see if he can fare any better. Change up too low and it's one and oh. The one and oh delivery. Just lucky to make contact on that one as it's chopped foul. No score here as we play inning number two. Now a little pop up off toward the third base side. We have a little bit more vote reporting to do. Rounders at 53.8%. Ives is at 46.2. It's not enough to count single votes yet. Pritzker is handily ahead. It's He's maintaining that 45% up 20 points. And nothing else has changed. We still have a, a long way to go, but... Pritzker is a heavy favorite at this point. Here's Jock Leading off for the Dodgers. Tyler Clipper is a heavy favorite. Standing 6-3 gets the ball now out of the bullpen. Now pitching. Hit on the ground out for short. Gregorius has it. Let's check and let's see who Cook can. Okay, here's the defense for the away team. On the Democrat side. Actually, got new we got new metrics on the Democrat side. Pritzker is now at 42.8 percent. Daniel Biss is in second, 29.6 percent. Chris, Kennedy, the heir to the Kennedy family, is in third with 24.9 percent. On the Republican side, we also got new votes. Rauner, the incumbent Republican governor. Has 54.3%. Ives, the challenger, has 45.7%. In the Attorney General's race on the Democrat side, this is close. Kwame Raul has 25.3%. Pat Quinn. The former governor who Bruce Rauner ousted in 2014, 24.5%. Nancy Rothering is in a strong third with 6%. Erica Harold's whole already projected she would win. She's winning every count, every county that's reported. I may go out show you her victory speech. I'll I'll try. And also we have some other reporting. Marie Newman, the challenger to Congressman Daniel Lipinski in Illinois' 3rd District, is, is winning. She only has 690 votes and Lipinski only has 475, so it's way too early to call. We could see an incumbent fall. I'm just, I'm making incumbent falling alerts. And we have more reporting out of the Democrat Democratic primary. Pritzker at 
this at 28.8 and Kennedy at 25.4. And more of the Republican primary. Bruce Rauner at 54.1. Jeannie Ives at 45.9. And at the Attorney General's race, you know, I think I covered this, but no, I didn't. We got more reporting. Kwame Raoul holding his lead, 26.3%. Pat Quinn, the former governor, closely behind him, 24.5%. Nancy Rothering still in a strong third with 15.1%. And Sharon Fairley is the fourth place candidate, but she's still, she could still, I don't think she'll, she has a chance of coming back, but we're not ruling her out by any means. It's 13% on well, the Democrat side. And we just think I've already reported this. These reports are coming in rapidly, so I may not get every vote count, but Pritzker and Round are leading, and Kwame Raoul and Pat Quinn. It's going to be a late night. Pat Quinn's known for litigation and all that, so known for litigating a lot of his elections. He filed for recount in 2014, but to no avail. Ooh, we do have some significant reporting. Robert Pritzker, J.B. Pritzker, same thing, has 43.5%. Daniel Biss, 27.2%. Chris Kennedy, 26.3%. We're... Looking at votes, I definitely say Pritzker is a, a thousand vote cushion. That's not much in Illinois, but still. And looking at different counties, Daniel Biss, he's winning hef heftily in Champ Champaign County. That's where University of Illinois is. That was expected. Maybe he could win some other universities. Maybe one of the capital. Chris Kennedy only has one small county, Clay County. And then Pritzker is winning Chicago. Pritzker is the favorite, no call. Rauner is winning 53 to 47 against Jeannie Ives, no call. Kwame Raoul has a two point lead, 25.1, 23.1 against Pat Quinn. And Nancy Rothering is in third at 17%. Cook County, where Chicago is, is going to Kwame Raoul in this Attorney General's race. And so is the suburbs and and Champaign County, but Champaign County's narrow. That may be blue and not yellow by the end of the night. It, Pritzker's holding a steady lead. Steady lead. Rounders too early to call. We're about. We could have a projection soon. The now that we got some of Chicago in. Uh, this gets foul, it's 0-1. Into the windup, here comes the 0-1. A and swing then. and a miss at the big curveball. Almost a worm burner as he misses on a low fastball. Ball one. Pritzker has a 22,000 vote lead at 44%. Biss at 26.5 and Kennedy at 26.3. I'm guessing Chicago keeps coming in. Pritzker is doing what he needs to do in Chicago. Rockford. I'm not calling this yet. Daniel Biss, the second place candidate, is a state senator from Rockford. Rockford. And there's a lot of vote in there. Still, there's still a lot of vote in Champaign. So I'm still waiting to call it, but Pritzker's that two favorite. Here's another one-two. He is now a forty-thousand vote lead. Keeps coming, but 
I'm not calling it when a big city's not in. Ives and Rauner. This is close. Bruce Rauner is only at 52.7%. Jeannie Ives at 47.3. I don't know. Maybe that crazy ass ad that Ives ran actually helped her. I'm not sure. But that she's running close with the incumbent Republican governor, and I'm going to have to wait Annie a while to play this. Yeah. A ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch. It was supposed to be a 20 point blowout. I was supposed to be able to call it from first. The first inning is first. over. Rounders Nothing across here this half. No. We played two full, it's and we are tied. Race. Nothing, nothing. Very close, but Chicago is. We welcome you back on a sunny day County, here in Los Angeles. Set to start the third the inning in this one. Republican here's the left County fielder Yoenis Espedes. He's the number seven hitter, Maybe but he's leading off the third. That is going overwhelmingly. Or not overwhelmingly, but for Bruce Rauner, it's about a third in. On the Democratic side, I get it's about 20% in. So there's a lot of Chicago coming in, and that's where Pritzker's doing his strongest. I mean, Rockford still hasn't come in, so that's why we're not calling it, but... J.B. Pritzker is now officially at 44.2, Daniel Biss at 27, and Chris Kennedy at 25%. I tr truly don't think Chris Kennedy has much of a ch chance. If anybody has a chance to take down Pritzker at this point, it's Daniel Biss. Chris Kennedy should start drafting his concession speech. It's looking very, it's looking very grim for him at this point, but I don't know. Southern Illinois is filling in for Biss. Kennedy has two very small counties coming in. And on the Republican side, 20% reporting. Rauner is up 53-47. Still way too close to call. On the Democratic Attorney General side, this is a big development. Kwame Raoul is up to a nine-point lead. He has 33.3%. Pat Quinn has 24.1%. It seems like Sharon Nancy Rothering has dropped to fourth, and Sharon Fairley is holding steady at 13%. Nancy Rothering's all the way down to 9%. Chicago's coming in strong for Kwame Raoul. I'm not projecting it yet, but I'm saying Kwame's the favorite to take down Pat Quinn, which would officially put his political career in the shitter. First six guys in the lineup have been retired in order. Yeah, it's been a great start to the guy on the mound. It'll be interesting. One's the count. Thing to see if they can find a way to get to this guy before he really settles in. little dribbler down the line that winds up foul for the second strike now a ball pulled hard but fouled off to the left that's a nice to we'll have a two strike breaking ball just out of the zone he was able to put enough on it to get another pitch. swung on and missed really fine that time for the first down to start the at bat there it's nothing in one that was an ugly swing Pritzker's holding steady but Rockford and like Champagne have not He's come dominated. in and that's what gives Biss a glimmer of hope is Rockford and Champagne well, Rauner's holding steady at 5347 Sinker misses and it's one and two now our Erica Harold projection Holding very steady on the Republican side. AP still has not officially projected it, but but no chance to recover. Ripken is on it first after the strikeout. So good awareness that time as that'll go as a strikeout, but he's aboard on the drop third strike. Disconnected for a second, but 
Yeah, I should bring in a, a hitter. Where's my... We'll get the call here as he'll hit for the pitcher. <laughs> Brits. EP is not officially projected the race, but it's 23% reporting. Harold's holding steady. She's she's winning Chicago. She's winning this race. Knuckle curve breaks outside for ball one. I don't see any hope for the other one. I'm projecting Harold's a Republican for Attorney General. He's ready. Here's the 1 0. A swing and a miss at a ball down. In a double play situation, that's the location you want a guy to swing at. More than likely, he's going to beat it into the ground. A swing and a miss on a ball that jammed him. Pritzker is holding a steady lead. That's what I can report. On one and, two. and he chased it in the dirt. Uh, yeah, mom. Stepping in and ready for another shot. Luba, for one for him here in this one. Now a swing, and he just fouls this one away. All right, guys, I have to go take a break. I'll be with you. I'll be back with you in a little while.